Hey, Sivan here. Welcome to the fourth video in this uh, tutorial. Um, this one we're going to look at extrude edge loops and deleting edge loops. So, to start with the tutorial, we're going to need to start with the primitive. So, create polygon primitives and for now we're going to just start with a cube. So, we've looked at kind of cutting up what we've got, so increasing the subdivs in the channel box um, and kind of how to pull um, the vertexes that we've got um, apart. There's only a certain amount that we can do with a cube. So what we have to do is kind of build on top of um, primitives. Uh, and the way we do this is kind of a mixture of extruding and edge loops. So when we first make an object, we can adjust the subdivision, so maybe three or whatever. Um, this is only, this can only sort of be done when we have our sort of fresh object. After that, um, your results may not be um, sort of that good and it could sort of distort the object. So after we've done it um, at the beginning and we've sort of done extra things and whatever, we, can, we can't we can really adjust this anymore. So what we have to do is extrude and add edge loops. So the one we're gonna start with um, is extrude. So pretty much, um, you only extrude with faces and edges. Um, basically, if you extrude with vertexes, um, it pretty much does that. Yeah. So generally, that's not what you're going to want. Um, so face or edges. If we have a completely sealed object like this, it's got no holes in it, the chances are we're going to be using a face extrude. Um, mainly um, to kind of keep our object tidy um, and normally you don't want three edges connected to one um, uh, three faces connected to one edge um, so hold down right click face and then all I've done is just selected this one top face um, right so next thing is we want to make sure that our menu set is on modeling um, and we want to go into Edit Mesh, and we've got Extrude. Uh, Extrude now has a hotkey. I don't think in, um, say, 12, 13, and maybe 14 it had a hotkey. I uh, can't remember. Um, but it now has a hotkey, um, and in later videos I'll show you how to actually add it to a shelf. So just for now, just hit the Extrude tool. What we get is um, basically a combination of, in a gizmo of all of our transformation tools. So we've got the arrows for our translate, we've got um, the circle here for our rotate, we've got the squares for our scale. So it's basically just a combination of them all. Because I'm using this selection mode with the little square, um, it's added a little square right on the edge. Um, it's another reason I use it, it kind of tells me where I've done extrudes or where I have kind of faces that are flat. Um, so it's kind of another useful side to it. But the way the extrude works is you grab the um, faces you want, you hit the extrude tool, you'll get your gizmo like this. You have a few ways of then kind of working with it. Um, you can kind of just grab uh, and pull it out, which will then link to the settings in, in this little option box. Um, so what's now happened is I've pulled this basically out of that face. So rather than me just grabbing that face and pulling it up, it's pulling it up but adding another four faces. So I've now added to this object to the geometry. It's now got more edges, more faces, so I have more to work with. So what I can do is pull it out uh, I can also rotate it, um, same as any of the other um, tools. I can scale it as well. Um, so, main thing with this though, is we have this other little icon here. It looks kind of like a power sign, um, like an on-off. Um, this is local or global. Um, so the cursor changes. So the one it's currently on um, is local. Um, we know this because if we look at the color of these arrows, 
in relation to these arrows, um, they don't match up. So they don't match to our global, so it means they must be local. Whereas if we click this, the color and the direction of the arrows now matches, so these must be global. Um, depending on what you want to do, in a moment you'll see the real sort of big difference of it. Um, but so you can use your gizmo, you can left click on the word and you'll get this kind of double, um, the arrows go either way, and you can just sort of left click um, and drag it. Um, so this is basic, basically your scale, you've got your translate, um, divisions, so if we want to add more edge loops on the way up. Um, in um, 16, um, not sure if it was in 15, but 14, 13 backwards, um, it didn't have cute faces together in here. Um, in a moment I'll show you why it's um, kind of important, um, but in previous versions it is under the um, edit mesh options, there's a checkbox at the top that's um, generally you'll want it turned on, um, but that's where it's kind of found, um, whereas here in the new version you can just scroll it on or off. So, um, just down the extrude, just kind of dragged a few out, so I've got something extra to do now. Um, so, keep faces together, why it's so important. If I grab these two faces here, so I've just single clicked and I've shift. If I now do an extrude, um, so edit mesh, extrude. If I turn keep faces together off, what happens um, for starts is I've now got an extra little dot, so it shows I've got faces in the middle. If I then drag it out, these faces are now separate. If I turn it back on, it removes the gap. So depending on what kind of objects you're making, you may want to extrude multiple faces out, but you want them to kind of keep separate from each other. Um, it's just kind of one of those things to sort of speed up um, workflow. Um, but that's the, the big importance to it. Right, so. That's sort of one extrude. Um, if you are doing multiple extrudes, so you, you kind of know where you want to go with your, your object, you know the shape quite well, what you can do is grab your faces, hit extrude, um, kind of drag it up, and then what you can do is use the hotkey G. So just by pressing G, G is universal for repeat last um, tool. It works on the majority of tools, not every tool, um, but it kind of speeds up how quick you model. So all I did was just hit G and just keep going up with that. Because it's local, the object has gotten thinner because um, it's following the path um, of the previous face. When doing um, an extrude, if you decide to use the W and R, um, you only lose the, the small menu options. In your channel box, you still have every single option, um, and inside there, you have things like um, keep faces together. Um, the difference is um, keep faces together works um, to turn things on and off um, is one and um, zero. So it's probably best to do it um, before you actually start dragging up. So break it apart, hit, put this to zero to turn it off, um, and then after you can actually um, pull these faces apart. Um, if you're using, if you do want to break the faces apart, I would suggest just using it in the standard extrude tool, but if you do accidentally press um, your W or anything, um, you can still get all of these tools um, inside um, your channel box. Um, so that's extrude. Um, you have to use extrude um, pretty much uh, in majority of things you do to build um, and add to the geometry. But say if I've kind of worked this up and now I realize I need some sort of face to come out of the side here, um, I can't really do an extrude here because I end up with faces inside, which uh, is basically bad practice. It's, it's not sort of good model, model quality. What we can do is we can add or insert edge loops. Um, there's a few different tools um, that do slightly different things for the edge loops. 
Um, for now, all we're going to look at is the kind of standard um, default edge loop, which is across all versions. Um, so under Mesh Tools, there is Insert Edge Loop Tool. For now, I'm just going to use the basic. So select it. And what happens is it automatically goes to edge mode on the object you last had selected. And what you do is I'm going to reset my settings so it's default. So same again. Um, the tool changes to here. Double click on it, opens the settings. And most tools will have a reset. Um, it may be straight sort of a button there or it may be edit reset tools. So I'm just going to reset. Uh, and what we do is we I want my edge loop to go around this way. Um, so to insert an edge loop going that way, I need to click on an edge that it's going to intersect. So I want it to go this way across my object. So it's going to intersect any of these downward lines. So I can click on any of these. So any of these, and it will then put it the way I want it to go. So if I wanted it to go up and down the object, it would be any of these cross um, sort of lines the other way. Um, that's the, the main thing. The other thing you want to avoid is if you add an edge loop, so if you hold down left click and drag, you can kind of move the edge loop and the dash line will show you where it will go the whole way around the object. It will always do a loop wherever possible. Um, and so it kind of will go the whole way around the object, show you where it is, and then it will then place it. This tool, by default, it doesn't go away after using it once. So you may need to be careful because um, quite often happens where you'll place an edge loop and then you'll think you're going to go and select an edge loop and you'll actually add another one. Um, so to get rid of it, just press Q um, and that will move off of the tool. Right, so inside the edge loop tool, we've got a couple of um, settings. By default, it's just relative distance. You just drag where you want. Um, the useful kind of options in here to for other situations is multiple edge loops. This can work in quite a few different sort of ways. Um, so for example, if you put it to one, it will split the object exactly in half. So um, if you want to delete it and then mirror it, um, you can do something like that. There are other ways to do it, um, but this is one way. Um, but same again, so if I just, for example, increase this to three, it will add three edge loops. You can't, you can hold down left click and it'll show you the dashed lines, but you can't drag this tool. It, they're locked because they are evenly spacing them. Um, and then it will just kind of add them. Right, so that's the edge loop tool. Once you've added it, you can then go back into face and then you can start doing your um, extrudes again because you've got extra um, sort of faces to work with smaller segments. So I'm just going to undo, get rid of some of this mess off of my model. Right, so one kind of thing I want to show you is if you add an edge loop, you, you know, in your edge loop mode, you can move it around. If you know exactly where you want to move it, you can, same as before, just use your um, global up here. One thing you want to be careful with is that you don't do things like that. So I basically dragged an edge loop that's inside here over another edge loop. What's happened now is I've crossed these faces over. And this is why you'll get this sort of flickering effect. You've got um, faces basically overlapping each other. Um, when, you know, right now, general view, it doesn't look too bad. When you do things like texturing and whatever, um, this will cause some very sort of, um, it'll basically make your texturing difficult um, because the, the textures will flicker on and off depending on which face you can see. Um, so you need to be a little bit careful with it. Right, so that's extrude, that edge loop. One last tool I want to show you, um, very sort of quick tool, is if we put in too many edge loops, so say for example I've put this one in here and I want to get rid of it, you can just hit the delete key. So the edge loop's gone. Um, the only problem with this is you might sort of notice the edges still follow the shape where the edge loops were. The reason this is, we only deleted the edge. The vertexes are still um, holding it in place. 
um, which kind of you want to avoid. Um, so obviously you can go back in after, then select all the vertexes and then hit delete. Um, that kind of adds um, sort of to the, the extra work you've got to do. The quick thing you can do is under edit mesh, we have delete edge vertex. This will delete a whole edge and any vertexes that are associated to it. So you could sort of see away, um, see straight away that the object has gone um, sort of move shape. That's because the vertexes are um, have been deleted as well. You don't want to leave um, vertexes hovering. Like it may not look too bad. You know, you may want to keep that shape, just not have the edge. But when you go to add edge loops, it will Maya won't know what to sort of do. So it won't let you add edge loops and you'll end up with odd things like this where it's just added a single um, edge, not a whole loop. So if you encounter that problem, the chances are you've got vertexes hovering somewhere in your scene um, and you need to kind of just go around, um, find them um, and then delete them. So delete edge vertex um, and then I could just delete all of these if I wanted. So G. Um, G, and then I'm back to a standard um, six-sided shape. So that's extrude, edge loop, and delete edge vertex. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to do um, pivot points, freezing transformations, and deleting histories. See you there.